Hello. Welcome, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to the webinar series brought to you by the Centro Institute. My name is Ryan Manchi. I lead the Centro Institute, and I am your host for today. Uh, if you are, for some reason, not familiar with Centro, I'll tell you very quickly about us. We are a provider of software and services for digital advertisers. Our technology is designed to boost media, team, and business performance by enabling advertisers to plan, buy, and analyze campaigns all on a centralized and collaborative system that we call BASIS. We have an amazing team of more than 700 media specialists, data pros, search wizards, programmatic prodigies, account leaders, and digital experts who provide our clients with raving fan service at every stage of any campaign. A recording of this webinar, as well as the slides, will be shared with you later today and we'll also have some time at the end of the presentation for some questions. I'm so happy that you joined us today. Our presentation is titled Search Marketing in a Crisis, and I am joined by two very special guests. Uh, first off, Dan Golden is president, co-founder, and chief search artist at Be Found Online, which is not only one of Centro's partner agencies and clients, but also our SEO agency. Dan is a veteran digital marketing executive, regular contributor to Forbes, Huffington Post, Inc. Magazine. He's a speaker at conferences like ANA and Conscious Capitalism, and he lectures at both DePaul and Northwestern. Welcome, Dan. And we're also joined by Robert Kurtz, who's Senior Director of Paid Search at Centro, where he oversees a team of dedicated search experts crafting custom search engine marketing plans. And Robert's got a decade and a half of experience working across verticals and brands ranging from healthcare and e-commerce to QSRs, gaming, nonprofit, and so much more. Now I'm going to hand it over to Dan and Robert to actually talk a little bit through a little bit more about BFO and Centro search creds and then jump into the presentation. Dan, welcome. All right. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. Uh, this is the only about us slide, so uh, indulge me for 20 seconds here. Uh, BFO exists to grow digital brands for businesses that give a damn because we believe business can be a force for good in the world. Um, that's that's a mouthful, but that, that really guides uh, why we do what we do. Uh, we're a digital agency headquartered in Chicago, but uh, we've got locations in London and Singapore and remote folks around the world. I'm, I'm broadcasting from the world headquarters in my basement in Chicago. Uh, I can see the bouncy house, but the kids aren't in it, so I'm, I'm hoping we're going to be in the clear for the next uh, 45 minutes here. Um, the, uh, the brag slide here, the one thing I love pointing out uh, is we were the number one best place to work on ad age a couple years back, um, and uh, proud of the work we do and the clients and partners that we get to do it with. So um, thank you all for listening and looking forward to diving into the content shortly. Awesome, Dan. Well, very good. Well, this is Robert Kurtz. So just going over Centro's search capabilities. Centro's search team is part of a small percentage, percentage of agencies with a premier partnership um, with Google. So this badge is really awarded to those companies that showcase high performance standards in their accounts and tend to have larger total ad spends. Only 2% of Google agency partners actually even receive this badge. So we're the first to hear about an access to beta learning opportunities training, like this webinar, of course, hands-on assistance with high-priority accounts. So we also have a dedicated team of paid search specialists across the entire United States. So our team is constantly trained on the latest and greatest, as well as Google's best practices when it comes to search. In addition to Google, of course, we also manage Bing, Apple Ads, and Amazon advertising opportunities. So as we get into today's agenda, Really what you'll hear uh, from us today, so we know that crisis happens. So what constitutes a crisis? What are uh, those areas as we're kind of in right now with COVID-19 that really we need to be cognizant of moving forward when it comes to search management? We'll cover how to use search data to evaluate your circumstances. And then really from there, we'll cover off on local search and Google My Business opportunities. And then we'll cover on on-site uh, recommendations and then talk through paid search strategies that you can execute depending on your given situation. And then, of course, finally, we'll wrap up with a nice Q&A. All right. So let's, uh, let's talk about the crisis. So 
obviously, I think I know what we're all thinking about here. Um, we're, we're in the middle of something unprecedented. And, uh, you know, the, the impacts that we are seeing across our, our portfolio uh, are, you know, obviously vary by industry. We work with hospitality brands that are shut down, retail, uh, retail uh, locations that are closed. Uh, but we're seeing impacts in different ways even with B2B brands and uh, companies that aren't necessarily directly impacted, but, uh, you know, taking a step back, we're all impacted. Um, you know, uh, BFO as a company, we work from home all the time. That, that part hasn't been as much of a challenge for us, uh, but every, we all know this is hitting different verticals and industries in, in different ways. And I, I guess as we, we sort of think about uh, the ways in which this affects uh, is going to affect different brands. Um, I, I want to kind of step back and, and kind of look about some of the other other crises that we've we've helped some brands navigate. Um, so next slide here. If you go uh, weather, um, weather is something uh, that can be a uh, um, impactful in positive ways for certain brands. And uh, we've worked with a lot of hospitality brands that have weathered hurricanes. Uh, and some of the process processes that we built around that of when do you start advertising again? When do you open up? When does the booking window, uh, if we anticipate uh, things are gonna open up three months from now, how often or when do people start planning for that? Uh, so there are little different impacts uh, depending on different industries of, of how we react to things that are, you know, that are happening in the world. Uh, something else that we're seeing, uh, next slide please. Uh, legislation, policies, policy changes, right? Uh, so whether it's, um, I, I know it's been a while since we've all heard GDPR and the CCPA or different sorts of regulations that might, uh, that might change our ad, ad targeting. We, we had a lot of brands a couple years back uh, that were relying on third-party data integrations with Facebook. Um, and Cambridge Analytica came around and all of that, uh, all of that targeting uh, shifted. And, and so brands that are relying on one specific channel or specific tactics um, this type of crisis, obviously, nothing is uh, uh, comes close to what we're all experiencing right now. Um, but different brands are going to see different side effects, uh, uh, whether it's an ad policy change. Um, we have a B2B brand that is uh, uh, FedEx and, and UPS have changed all of their rules. Uh, and so their, uh, the effects on their business have, have really um, hit, them, hit them sideways. So it's coming from every direction. Um, another example that we've uh, we've navigated before um, on the next slide here is ad policy changes, right? Google or Bing or Facebook uh, can can change the game with the rules change. Uh, so we had a, a payday uh, company that was very reliant on on Google, and uh, we got about a, a two week notice that that channel was uh, was disappearing. Um, and so shifting media priorities and and diversifying the media mix. Uh, is, is something there. So, you know, crisis as, as we put it in context to, to marketing, um, it, can, it can come in a bunch of different ways. And there are gonna be businesses that might not be as direct, directly uh, in, impacted by, by COVID where policy changes or supply chain uh, uh, issues for certain products, um, there, there's, a, there's a lot that we're gonna see. So let's, uh, let's move on and, and kind of dive into what we're seeing out in the marketplace and uh, and I will pass the mic over to over to Robert. Perfect. So obviously, being part of the search team, Dan and I are going to evaluate uh, a lot of crises with search data. Uh, but we also want to recommend that businesses, of course, evaluate their per the historical performance as well when looking at how crisis crises are really impacting their performance. So at Centro, we use a variety of tools, and we also recommend to review how the crisis really is impacting the ability to service customers for businesses. So uh, within uh, the opportunities here, are you seeing an uptick or a downturn of interest in KPIs historically in terms of your performance and obviously evaluating that within a platform like Google Analytics? Uh, we often turn to Google Trends to review, as Dan will go into more detail shortly, but really reviewing how we monitor user search behavior. Are users really seeking out your company more or less than pre-crisis timing? Are there any verticals that you align with that are really seeing a pop or a decline and something that you need to actually adjust your marketing and search performance to really combat? We also review search query reports in Google Ads. So this is the actual search terms that are triggering your paid ads. 
So this really allows us to monitor how user behavior is changing and how users are really seeking out your specific business. Maybe the way that users are searching for your business is quickly changing. So you wanna be able to react and place yourself in the most appropriate path for your brand exposure. So on the next slide, given all of that kind of search data at our disposal, what is Centro seeing in terms of uh, the most recent crisis? So kind of benchmarking uh, January, uh, the middle of January here, you know, how is search interest changing since COVID-19 really entered the public interest with Centro's data? Um, so of course, we're seeing massive swings within categories uh, since COVID-19 really first came about. It took a little bit for search to kind of catch up, I think, to some of the media and news outlets in terms of what they were saying and where people were um, in crisis and even regions of the country, of course. Um, but now that we're full swing, we're definitely seeing some uh, dramatic growth and declines in specific verticals. So government-related searches have exploded with upwards of 165% growth. News and publications have also seen drastic increase in search interest at 77%. Uh, the finance and business vertical also have really grown dramatically, both uh, at 60% growth each compared to where they were in mid-January. Health is actually surprisingly up in terms of surge interest at 22%, which is really impressive knowing that most brick and mortar gyms are closed. So it does kind of show you how maybe people are still searching specific verticals despite uh, businesses not being able to serve them in a normal fashion. The beauty and personal care category is remaining relatively flat in terms of overall search interest there. So not negative, not positive, just relatively flat kind of standard quo, if you will, uh, for those searches. And then the food and grocery uh, vertical and dining and nightlife specifically are really showing declines in search interest in, since mid-January. Uh, dining and nightlife specifically is actually down 46% uh, since the mid-Jan uh, point. But sometimes we need to do a little bit more due diligence than just relying on vertical trends. This is great at a high macro level. But we need to dig into client-specific results and trends to really be able to evaluate the current environment. So on the next slide here, you can actually see for one of Centro's QSR clients, which part of that dining and nightlife vertical category that's seeing a big decline in search interest, they've actually seen a significant boost in terms of their interest. And this is interest for their brand uh, for the last five years. So you can actually see on google.com, the search interest for this brand is the highest that it's ever been by far. And this is because they were able to pivot with their marketing messaging and ad messaging within the paid search space and other media verticals to let diners know that they actually had the ability to uh, still provide services during this most recent crisis, COVID-19. So of course, we always recommend additional research and trend evaluation to make sure that we're catching the actual opportunity on a brand by brand basis, even though they may happen to be in a vertical that's seeing significant shifts here in the last couple of months. All right. So, so taking that and getting, yeah. So take, taking that and getting even more micro, uh, right. So not even at the brand level or the category level, uh, but looking at categories within brands, right. So, um, it is probably, unfortunately, a little late for me to pivot Be Found Online to be making bread machines, uh, but there are a lot of winners right now. And this is, uh, I know a lot of us on the line, my, myself included, and many of the brands that we work with are focused on defense and making cuts and surviving and what do we need to change to, to get through this. And um, I want us all to remember that there's still offense to be played here and there, there will be winners coming out of this. And there are, uh, with change, shakeups, competitors going through some of the same challenges that, that your brand is, uh, there are going to be winners, right? So um, identifying growth categories in the marketplace, there's, uh, there's going to be a lot of opportunities. And uh, of course, not every brand can pivot to selling these t products on the top 12 list here. Uh, and there's um, references if you guys want to dig into any of this data. I, I recognize this chart. It's not readable on here. Uh, but you know, splitting out campaigns, so uh, decoupling your budgets if there are categories that are that are growing faster or that are that are winners, 
Um, the whole ways uh, that many of us have structured accounts uh, is based on the old normal. And so in the new normal, identifying where those winners are and um, making sure they're decoupled from uh, categories that are declining, um, there's a big opportunity to kind of maximize revenue and opportunity uh, on those categories. Um, and on the flip side, you need to closely monitor your inventory. Um, we've had brands uh, that have had a couple of categories uh, that have hit, and of course, we go after the winners. Um, but inventory, supply chain, uh, in, in some categories is a, is a real, um, is going to have a real effect on marketing, right? So anytime there's drastic change, you always want to be looking at those numbers and, uh, um, making sure we're not spending if we can't, uh, if we can't service those, those clients, or at least, uh, if you're spending budget, make sure you're capturing information or, or refocusing on, uh, uh, capturing emails for when things get back into stock. Um, so the flip side of that, of course, there's declining categories, right? Um, and many brands are, are seeing that. Um, find the bleeding and, and, and stop it. You know, this is where the defense comes in. Um, so the obvious action of cutting spending, some cases uh, as it relates to search, you don't necessarily have to cut spending because demand is going to uh, decrease in those categories uh, commensurate what's happening with what's happening in the in the marketplace. Uh, what I would say though is remember to implement reporting uh, at the category level or even product level um, that you're watching for the rebound because things, uh, you know, arguable what, when or where or how things are going to go back to quote unquote status quo, uh, but things will rebound. And so making sure that the campaigns, the categories, the keywords, uh, um, the, the stuff that has been turned off, uh, that you're monitoring that. And that's, that's where I think search as a metric can really help uh, make this channel um, a a source of business intelligence, not just about how your, how are your paid search ads doing, but um, what's happening in the marketplace as a whole and what kind of business decisions can you make about reopening um, based on the data that we're getting. So uh, next slide here, uh, there are some industries um, and we're trying to provide a couple of different angles and a couple of different data sources here. Hopefully this is helpful because I know we have a diverse uh, audience on the, on the call today, um, but every, vertical, every is impacted, right? If, if, if the numbers say it's flat, it's because they've had enough wins and losses that offset each other. Um, so we are seeing an impact, you know, uh, across the board. Um, a handful have been positive. Most have been negative one way or another. Um, but understanding and kind of drilling down, looking at these different sources, um, this is a great one from a, a, another partner of ours, Quizio. The, the details are linked here if you want to dive in uh, and see more specifics uh, for any of these these industries, and this is all looking at year over year. Um, and of course, uh, next slide, there are a number that have been significantly impacted, and uh, we don't need to dive into the obvious around, you know, auto rentals and, and travel and rec recreation, um, but it's, uh, um, it's important for us to kind of look, uh, make sure we're looking at our own data to see what, what kind of effect is really happening with our brand. Macro is great. It gives context. Um, so a, a few suggestions here. Uh, if you go to the search Search Console reporting. Um, this is an actual example. This is from a, um, a brand that we have that is winning right now um, and has had a significant increase in demand. They moved uh, uh, to some context without naming names. They moved more into delivery towards home. Uh, and that, um, that kind of shifted in their category and caused a, a bunch of increases. Um, Search Console, there's a wealth of data there. Um, it's typically used by SEO teams and webmasters around indexation and uh, but there's there's a lot of real time intelligence that you're uh, that you're getting from 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 search behavior um, that might not show up in Google Analytics because uh, most of our web analytics or and certainly our paid traffic is reporting based on what we're doing and what's coming in. Um, search Console some great uh, some great data uh, on on kind of rankings and what's happening in the marketplace uh, as a whole. Um, another another tool, of course, we were going to mention this uh, is Google Trends. Um, so lots of opportunities. If you haven't played with this, uh, you know, uh, as Robert showed in an earlier slide, the, this 100, what do these numbers mean? Absolutely nothing. It's all indexed. Uh, so what I would recommend is sort of looking at um, terms related to each other uh, and looking at where there's a, a, a jump and where there's a drop and hopefully using this to identify categories that might still be strong uh, and identify opportunities, right? And because what's happening right right now in the marketplace, and this goes beyond just search, but CPMs are dropping in Facebook, CPCs are dropping in in Google, 
And so there are a lot of opportunities for brands that are not pulling out uh, to get smarter and, and pounce on those opportunities to play a little bit of offense now uh, when, a, when a lot of your competitors are, uh, are retreating. Um, another, uh, another tool uh, or service that we would recommend looking into is anomaly detection. And there's a couple of different platforms that the, the team at BFO uses uh, for, for uh, different brands that we work with. Um, but anomaly detection software, there's so many changes happening uh, that, uh, you know, there's, there's no way that a human can look at every report in Google Analytics on any given day. Um, so identifying whether it's a spike in conversion rates uh, or an increased drop off or uh, inventory issues or spikes in certain categories on your site uh, that when you're looking at the product level or the macro level of site as a whole, uh, there's a lot of data that, that, that gets missed. And given that like a change order can happen in, there, there are states that are opening right now. Uh, whether that's a smart idea or whether they're ready for it, I will save that for someone else's webinar. Uh, but there's gonna be reactions in the marketplace that marketers, there's no way you can watch every news channel and, and predict. So getting laser focused on your data and identifying anomalies in that data, especially on, on, on your website, um, there's a huge opportunity to, again, make, make search a, real, uh, a platform for business decisions. Uh, a few other areas of the site. Uh, obviously, when we look at brand demand, uh, organic, direct organic traffic, uh, and direct traffic and organic search, um, are two indications of brand uh, brand demand um, that is less affected by more a reflection of the marketplace and less of a reflection of uh, of, of marketing and things your team is doing. Um, the next would be market level reports, and you can slice and dice this in Google Analytics based on different paid channels, uh, but uh, identifying the markets that are starting to see an increase uh, or or a delta. So you know, I, I often like to compare market to market when you're looking at comparing date ranges. This was taken last week. Uh, and we're already starting to see some big increases in, uh, in some markets, flat in others, and uh, there's plenty of data I didn't include here that has a lot of, uh, a lot of red numbers as well with, uh, with drops. Um, and then the other piece being uh, site search, um, making sure that uh, you're identifying if people can't find information they need. This is gonna be critical when it comes to reopening. Consumers are gonna have a lot more questions than they have historically, and it's up to the brands to, um, to get that information out there and, and, and help them make, uh, make the decisions they need to, to re-engage with your brand. Um, so taking that a couple of steps further, uh, now we're gonna dive into local search and, and Google My Business. Um, and we say the word Google a lot. Uh, I guess I'm a search guy, so we kind of do that. Uh, but local means a lot of other things. It is uh, um, you know, Bing local, uh, there's Facebook location pages, there's platforms like Yex that distribute across the, the web. So local means a lot. Uh, this is kind of the, the example or the angle that uh, we're going we're gonna to talk through here is you know, more specific to Google, but um, custom hours. This, this part is a no-brainer, but custom, customer experience right now and making sure uh, in, a, in times of rapid change that you have accurate information uh, displayed about your brand everywhere that it lives. Uh, and, a, and a stat I didn't include on the slide for, for retail brands or brands that have physical locations, um, the, the number of local actions that we see, like get directions, um, printing coupons, uh, all of those, those non-e-com activities, it's about four to one. Four of those activities happen on these profile pages and not on your website. And so making sure uh, not just publishing one COVID page on your site, but that this information is disseminated is, is gonna be critical. Um, so if you go on the next slide, there's a few opportunities within Google My Business, um, whether it's creating posts or announcements, um, updating, updating hours. Uh, this is also an opportunity to add amenities to things that people didn't care about three months ago. So um, touchless delivery, uh, sanit uh, um, messages about uh, you know, food safety, right? The things that people are really caring about are different. So this is an opportunity to make some of those updates to reflect, and if you have specific updates around uh, coronavirus hours or policies and procedures about how many people can be in a location, uh, there is a specific way where you can call out a COVID-19 update about your brand, uh, and it will be published. There's a, there's a new piece of search real estate opening up for brands um, to publish this information, and very few have really taken advantage of it, uh, but this is a great opportunity to get those messages, even if it's a pre-announcement about reopening, um, you can do this at the market level, so to, to also reflect some of the differences that you might be seeing if you have a brand in different states. Um, monitoring reviews is another thing, although the, the big 
the big red box I threw on here after we had built this slide is uh, Google and Yelp and, uh, and several other platforms are not publishing new reviews right now. Um, they've shifted their resources around coronavirus. So now might be a great opportunity as a brand uh, if you haven't engaged in uh, review aggregation and monitoring um, to get ready for that because the floodgates will open again and they will open again soon. Um, so like many brands pivoting their resources, there's a great opportunity there. Uh, and then the other, the, the next thing I would say uh, is embracing messaging platforms. So within Google My Business, you can actually enable messaging at the, uh, the page level. Um, and given that, you know, call centers and hold times are long and, and your customers are going to have a lot more questions, uh, there's also, you can see highlighted on, uh, on this left screenshot here, um, there's an opportunity for FAQ and question and answer content uh, loaded up on those pages. So uh, as a brand, I would shift to getting as much of that content and information uh, in, the, um, in the hands of your, uh, your customers to circumvent uh, customer service issues, negative reviews, and, and frustrations. Um, and in terms of on-site SEO or um, on-site recommendations, there's one specific thing that brands can be doing. Um, there is a, a new uh, a language uh, or a new um, structured data uh, for schema around COVID-19 announcements. And again, this opens up another piece of real estate in the search results uh, for brands that have uh, something that is critical to share with your customers. Um, so this is a, um, it, is, it is free, and then, again, there's a new piece of search real estate uh, that if you have something important to get in front of your customers, this is a place to do it. Um, we've actually included on, the, on this link here, again, this is all gonna be sent around, but uh, bfo.io slash uh, COVID schema, um, and we've got some custom imp implementation instructions, something we built for a few client of ours, uh, clients of ours that we're just giving out um, that will give you instructions on how to implement this language on your site. Um, and the other thing, SEO is a long game. Uh, and so right now, it's, uh, to me, it's about using your resources in the smartest way possible, uh, shifting your focus. Um, we work with many brands, ours included, that have some uh, additional resources right now. And um, finding those projects and those, those longer term uh, uh, opportunities, now is the time to be focused on next, right? We, we know this, that Q3 is going to be a, a difficult quarter for all of us, um, but let's, let's get ready to hit it in Q4 uh, and when this thing opens up. Um, so one easy suggestion, uh, take your team or any uh, underutilized staff uh, that you have and create a content writing army, right? Tackle those projects those, uh, that, that we're going to take all year and, and see what you can compress in, in the next two months um, to, to get your website and your, your marketing engine uh, with the tools and content uh, that it needs. Uh, and with that, uh, I will pass it back over to Robert to go through uh, some paid search. Awesome, fantastic. Great recommendations there. So now we'll kind of pivot into the paid space a bit. So on the next slide, kind of our overarching summary paid search in a crisis, really our recommendation here is get back to the basics. Make sure that you have the right message at the right place at the right time. Sounds obviously super easy, but it's a great time to reevaluate your strategies to make sure that you're actually spending dollars in the most effective areas that can manage performance for your business. So if you're a company that's actually benefiting from a crisis, you really need to actually adjust your marketing campaigns and your paid search buys to the higher demand. You might actually have to be more aggressive with your cost per click as there's significantly more demand in the space, um, probably out of nowhere for the most part, than there was a couple of weeks prior. You also want to maintain your KPIs. You might actually see your KPIs, if your KPI is a cost per ac action, actually start to tick up a little bit, very much in the similar vein of what you experienced in uh, Q4 holiday time period. And so managing kind of the volume of actions that you're driving with the cost that you're having to spend to get those usually will equal out in terms of uh, benefit to driving higher amount of business within paid uh, search space. Although probably more common with a lot of folks, you know, if you're experiencing a dip based on a crisis that's going on, you know, one thing when you stay active with your paid search uh, campaigns is you obviously get to keep a very specific message in front of your user base when they're seeking out your product or service, regardless if they can actually buy or use that service as of right now. When you are active with paid search, when you are experiencing a dip in a crisis, the likelihood of a conversion or even a click is probably lower. 
a lot of the times maybe your ad message is actually enough for what the client or the in client is looking for in that instance. So the consumer. So if they're looking for store hours and you can say that we're currently closed, that's great. And obviously if they're not clicking on your paid search buy, then it's not costing anything for that awareness driving opportunity. But of course, if you're able to pivot to e-commerce or even curbside availability or drive through availability, depending upon your business, that's something that you want to pivot with your ad messaging right away and let folks know that you have that availability. Um, of course, you want to ensure that your ad text is updated to pro promote any new or safe opportunity to interact with your brand during a time of crisis. But regardless, in either situation, you really just need to be considerate and maybe even update your ad messaging to a softer, more empathetic message, really relating with the consumer base because they're going through just a tough time as you're likely going through on the business side. Custom landing pages are actually a really great way to really provide customers with background and resources when there is a crisis going on. Usually folks are looking for a, a very specific set of information, operating hours, how they can actually get in touch with your business, how can they actually provide or be provided with a product or service that you offer. So creating that customized landing page or updates and driving folks directly there to really answer their questions uh, will go a long way in terms of consumer sentiment for your brand. Now getting more tactical in nature on the next slide, we actually have four key recommendations to consider when you're running paid search during a crisis. So the first tactic is CRM utilization. So basically this means take your, take your newsletter list, take your CRM list and really uh, maximize that when you're promoting it in paid search. So the two ways that you can really do that are potentially suppress your current uh, customer audience really maximize your, your spend on new incremental audiences to drive that new incremental business. But conversely, of course, you actually might want to have a different message for your customer base versus those who are still prospects and have not bought or been provided a service that you offer. So it really gives you that opportunity to pivot and talk to your customer base in the Google space, uh, really with your core audience with a unique and timely message. Uh, remarketing lists for search ads or RLSAs are really very much in a similar vein. So uh, crafting unique, timely messages, very much kind of ad copy here uh, to target consumers versus pro or target customers versus prospects is really going to go a long way in terms of uh, consumer sentiment and potentially even your conversion rates if you're able to still transact on your website. One really important factor here is to actually utilize negative keywords. Uh, when it comes to a crisis. You likely don't want to be associated with specific crisis crises going on. So you really want to safeguard for appearing uh, for those crisis related keywords. Um, and luckily, we actually have a free robust uh, keywords list available as a free download at the following link. So bfo.io slash COVID keywords. So this is for the current uh, COVID-19 crisis, um, but a very comprehensive list of negative keywords that you would likely want to actually apply to your paid search campaign to ensure that you're not appearing within crisis related keyword searches. And then of course, really combining paid and SEO is going to be extremely important. Reviewing your impression to click ratio for your organic traffic, reviewing potential average positioning so that you know maybe some keywords can be owned by SEO and, and organic search while others probably need to be filled in the gap and have paid presence where you're, where you're not potentially ranking well organically. Obviously combining both of those data sets really helps to better strategize what campaigns are crucial within paid versus what's really well covered and potentially can be scaled back or even paused, if that makes sense. But really capitalizing on all of these areas of interest can help really scale back or maximize uh, your performance and of course, leaning on organic search to really win when you don't have to be there and paid. So now on the next slide, we're actually going to pivot a little bit into some additional considerations to layer on to your paid search buy. So the first recommendation here is actually layering on YouTube. And during a crisis, it's really important to tell your story and how you're accommodating the new, although ideally temporary, environment that you're in. So adding YouTube video advertising uh, to existing paid search buys is actually a really efficient means to drive awareness. 
So video advertising may seem a little bit out of left field when talking about paid search, but YouTube advertising, of course, owned by Google and managed through Google ads is the same platform that we actually managed paid search by through. So at Centro, because of the synergy, the search team actually manages YouTube buys in addition to paid search opportunities. And then, of course, as a lot of folks know, but YouTube is actually the second largest search engine, second to Google.com. So it's larger than Bing, it's larger than Yahoo, it's larger than Apple. So there's still a significant amount of uh, opportunity on that platform to take advantage of. And within online video, people pay attention nearly two times more uh, to video ads on YouTube than they do on other platforms. And really, that's because YouTube ads are more likely to be seen by people who are really arriving with the uh, intent to watch a specific video. And then when you're layering on a video buy during a crisis, your CPMs and cost per completed views, uh, CPVs, actually can be one of the most efficient cost opportunities to reach your targeted audience. And very similar to search, you can still target via your C CRM list, any sort of retargeting based on uh, people interacting with your website historically or even your videos organically on your YouTube channel. And then pairing paid search with YouTube really can help that help drive that reach and frequency. So being able to marry kind of the uh, intent based opportunity on Google.com versus kind of the awareness driving opportunity on uh, YouTube specifically and help build that consideration. And then driving online and offline uh, action is a key with YouTube. Brick and mortar advertisers actually can, act, can track in-store traffic both on paid search and on YouTube buys. And we're actually able to get granular enough to where we can tell folks who are going through a drive-through or a curbside pickup as opposed to in-store knowing that that's really not available at the moment. So kind of continuing on this theme, a couple of specific tactics we recommend with YouTube when you're layering that on is actually to leverage what's called custom intent targeting. So really the gist here is that you're targeting people who are searching relevant keywords on google.com and then targeting them on YouTube when they visit to go watch a specific video. It obviously might not be contextually relevant, but they have historically searched for your product, service, or category, whatever you're bidding on. And so it's an extremely tactical and efficient way to reach a really great prospecting audience. Um, so going on to the next slide, in addition to utilizing custom intent targeting, we also recommend to add true view for action. So that sounds really complicated, but really all it is is the ability to add kind of a call to action overlay to your video ad so that it gives the user a physical button to be able to click through to your website and perform whatever action you would like them to perform. It also kind of gives a couple seconds at the very end of the video where an overlay pops over with a button in your logo uh, to give the users, again, a couple extra seconds to click on your ad and interact so that we're driving that relevant action uh, for folks. So no incremental cost to layer on these opportunities when it comes to YouTube, of course, and you still enjoy the branding benefits of video with more performance-driven results uh, on the YouTube side. And then for those who are really trying to drive in-store traffic right now, or maybe more curbside pickup traffic, we recommend adding on local campaigns to your paid search buy. So this is really uh, optimized to drive that in-store traffic at a very efficient rate. So retailers are obviously reopening from crisis. Local campaigns are designed specifically to drive that foot traffic into stores. You can see it's a pretty small ad, but it runs across all of Google's properties, search, maps, business profiles, YouTube, and even uh, display opportunities. So one of the biggest benefits of local campaigns is that they're really the only way you can buy ad space within Google Maps right now. And then finally, of course, not forgetting those who have online e-commerce capabilities, we recommend adding on shopping campaigns to your paid search buys, and specifically here, recommending smart shopping campaigns to help maximize the conversion value that we're driving. So similar to local campaigns, shopping ads would actually be visible within the search platform also display even YouTube and Gmail actually would have the opportunity to have shopping ad shown at the top of a user's Gmail account, which is a fantastic way uh, to drive both awareness and relevant conversions and a shopping e-commerce um, standpoint. 
And that's all the recommendations I have when it comes to paid search. All right. So, uh, so wrapping up, and I, I'm I'm going to give you one yes and on the previous slide, which is uh, an announcement that came last week. Google uh, is making Google Shopping free. Um, now, that doesn't mean the ads are going away and everything Robert said is still still valid, but uh, for any retailers that sell stuff online that haven't embraced uh, Google Merchant Center and Google Shopping, uh, it is it is now time to get in because there, there will be organic or free shopping results. So Google is, is, this is part of their play versus Amazon to be a more comprehensive marketplace. Um, the ads are still gonna be an integral part of that, especially the google.com side of that, uh, but getting all your products within Google Shopping uh, right now, um, e even if there are logistical issues to figure out, uh, this, this needs to be on every, uh, every brand's radar. Um, so recapping a few of the key takeaways from today. Uh, one is, uh, however you can, try and use search data as, as a BI resource. So the, the data here is something that can be used outside of just when do I turn on my paid search campaigns again. Uh, and the other big one from, uh, from my section was really updating your brand messages and, and, and leveraging search as a communication platform uh, for your customers, um, relevant now and, uh, and certainly as we get into reopening. For sure. And in terms of kind of your paid opportunity, of course, you want to react, but you don't want to overreact and you really want to follow whatever the data is saying and position your brand accordingly. But of course, whenever in doubt, rely on the experts. Give Dan and I a call and we're happy to help. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you both. I, I feel like even though we've talked through this material uh, many times as a, a guy that is uh, far from an expert within the search space, I continue to learn so much. So um, I appreciate it. Thank you both. Um, and, and thank you for, for everybody that, that tuned in. We've got um, some great questions that have already come in, but I would encourage you all, if you were sitting on a question or uh, something popped up, find that question tab within the webinar app on the right-hand side, submit there, and we'll do our best to, to answer those. Um, I have already gotten a couple couple questions around it. Yes, these slides that were presented, as well as the recording, will be sent to you uh, later today. Um, first, uh, first, first question, uh, from the, the audience, which I kind of love, um, was uh, this one from William. Um, he was talking about, um, I'll, I'll just read it, our business is one that has seen an uptick in interest due to COVID-19. As such, our site content mentions or is related to COVID-19, but some ad platforms like Google um, or even Twitter you know, on the social side are penalizing or halting ads with content related to COVID-19 or leading to pages that mention COVID-19. Uh, any, any, any recommendations? I think this one's open for, for, for both you guys um, on how to address that. Maybe any um, experiences that you've had with, with clients that have dealt with a similar challenge. Yeah, great, great yeah. question. Um, okay. this, in, in tr yeah, in terms of that disaster list, uh, um, this is one of those sideways side effects, right, of ad policy changes that, um, that can affect brands. I, I know, several other brands that happen to sell masks and some of the other products that are considered opportunistic and are, are not even regulated, but not allowed uh, on, on Facebook and Google. Um, so navigating Google editorial uh, is, is a difficult thing. So I, I don't have a silver bullet for you, um, but testing, testing landing page selection, uh, if you have access to a premium Google team, um, right now I, I know they are very understaffed in terms of editorial stuff. Um, so testing different, testing different ads, that, that is often the practical uh, advice that we get even when we have escalation within our, our premier Google teams. Um, so I, there are different levels to disapprovals. There are keyword and, and ad copy level disapprovals, and then there are account level flags uh, if you're deemed an advertiser that's being opportunistic or, uh, and, and I'm not saying you are, right? Even just having some of these keywords or categories can be, can be triggers. So I, I would say uh, testing and trying to get some new messages out there uh, is one way around it. Um, and uh, happy to dive in further uh, if you want to get in touch after the, the webinar. Yeah, and I think just from what Centro has seen, you know, I think Google has kind of gone back and forth on a lot of their policies as Dan was mentioning. So 
they kind of came out with a pretty strict no COVID and coronavirus um, advertising opportunity and even would decline you based upon what was on your landing page. They've really since softened that and really allowed uh, marketers to be able to drive to landing pages that do reference COVID-19, knowing that it's really important for those business to act- businesses to actually communicate what's going on during this crisis. Um, now, in terms of actually participating in the paid, paid space on those keywords, there are a select few verticals that actually can be whitelisted to participate. Uh, most are going to be more government and health related. And so, obviously, if you fall within one of those, William, we'll be happy to help. Perfect. Perfect. Um, we've got a couple questions, Dan, around uh, the, the reviews and the ratings. Um, so one from Lyle, I think a quick one, um, confirmed that Yelp has disabled reviews. That's a, that's a yes. That's yep. kind of across the board, everybody's disabled reviews. Okay. Can you, can you maybe talk a little bit more, this one from Gino, talk a little bit more about the ratings and reviews and, and what you see as far as the impact now um, and, you know, any recommendations you have around leveraging? Um, the, the kind of current state with those being disabled. Yeah. Um, well, now we're at a bit of a standstill, right? So anytime there, there's a pause, um, I look at this as an opportunity to get things right and get yourself in a position. Uh, we, we don't know what's going to happen with the floodgates, right? When Google and usually Google does something and then the dominoes fall with other platforms, uh, at some point, those flood, the, the floodgates are going to get opened again, right? And new reviews will be posted and um, there will be a spike in work that your team needs to do to address that. Um, so one thing I would say is just putting a system in place. And there are a lot of great platforms out there that are built for review monitoring and aggregation. Um, and I, I think the other, the other thing, which is, uh, you know, practical advice for any business, which is, uh, do the things to circumvent reviews because most reviews or in, in many reviews are, uh, are are not positive, right? It's a, it's a place for consumers to air their grievances with the brand. So by enable messaging and getting um, making your brand more accessible, getting some of the FAQ content around what are some frustrating situations that people will have with your brand, right? Whether it's showing up to a location and being seeing a line across the block because you can only allow five people in by law, right? Those are, um, you can get around those negative reviews by positioning your content and, and meeting them with the, you know, uh, with, with what they expect. So it, embracing messaging uh, on the review stuff, there's, a, you know, tons of good content out there. And again, I'm, I'm happy to follow up afterwards uh, with some advice on things to do, but I, I don't have an answer on when it's going to come back and what that's going to look like other than, you know, business as usual is, is on, on pause. We have another question. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, I was muted there for a second. Uh, this one for for Robert, uh, and, and uh, not from a central employee, um, but uh, a, a good question. Maybe you can address. Uh, why would you use the Google platform instead of running video in Basis? Oh, I love that. There on maybe the, um, the think- additive kind of nature. Totally, yes. I think just given the synergy between what we're seeing in paid search specifically, YouTube is actually a very easy add-on. And also given some of the performance metrics that we've seen out of YouTube when we've co-branded campaigns from a basis standpoint and YouTube standpoint, you know, YouTube is not ever going to replace the opportunity and probably uh, inventory that basis has. Of course, YouTube advertising, the way that we're buying it is really limited to YouTube.com. So the users have to be on that platform in order for one of our ads to obviously be shown. Uh, when we're talking about basis advertising, that has unlimited inventory in terms of all the different opportunities there, the PMPs that you can overlay, um, and really all the data that we can actually uh, hone in on and target folks with. Within YouTube, though, the synergies between paid search, Google specifically, of course, um, are significant. And so we can actually start to retarget folks who are on the paid search side with YouTube messaging, potentially even sequential message um, in that environment, knowing that's really important right now to kind of tell your story. So there's a lot of opportunity within YouTube uh, when you're running paid search specifically. I love it. I love it. Um, I, 
I know both of you kind of talked to some examples, more anonymized examples of clients that BFO is working with and that Centra is working with. Um, what about even other brands that are out there that uh, you've seen that your teams have seen um, that are just killing it, that are doing a great job with the with the messaging that have kind of really ramped up um, and, and taken to taken to heart a lot of the suggestions that you offered t- today. Dan, do you want to you want to go first and, and call anybody out that you feel like has done a great job? Uh, sure. I, one example, Chipotle. Um, the the focus I've seen from them on content around around safety and just um, a- addressing the new normal directly and uh, speaking to what customers are worried about proactively. Um, you know, I, I think there are. Uh, I saw I saw this was just uh, posted on social media, but some sort of uh, like a mashup of of the the TV ads related to coronavirus from from brand, like almost all of them following the exact same script of piano music and some pictures of people and then how long the company's been in business. Uh, you know, there, there's a, um, there's a lot of cliches out there and, you know, a lot of, um, as much as this is top of mind with everybody, there's a lot of fatigue about COVID everything. Um, which is why we made this webinar search marketing in a crisis and not, um, not another COVID-19 checklist. Um, cause some of this stuff is, you know, is, is going to be applicable to, to other situations. Um, I, I, I hadn't prepared a full list of shining examples, but there, you know, th- there are a lot of brands that are doing smart things right now. Whether that's going to pay off, I think we'll we were going to find out in three to six months. Uh, you know, which which brands have have made the right decisions uh, over the you know right now and in the coming months. Yeah, Rob, Robert, what what about you? Any anybody else other than Chipotle? I love that. I feel like they've done a great job. Yeah, I think. No, I, I think that's a great example, and and kind of staying within that same vertical, knowing that it's been hit extremely hard, and as we saw earlier, the actual search volume is declining. But Raising Cane specifically has positioned themselves really well uh, during this current crisis. I think you know they've updated all of their messaging. In fact, they've had their CEO Todd Graves really kind of come out and speak kind of to the consumer almost on a one-on-one basis in terms of uh, that communication, and then we've been able to kind of parlay a lot of that into our ad messaging, both in paid and in YouTube and other channels. So that's really seen a, a very ex, ex, exponential growth in interest, um, both from kind of a search side as well as, you know, keeping the restaurants going and actually feeding in, you know, business to those units. Love it. I love it. I, I think great examples of companies that are taking advantage of the, the, the time in the in the right way, you know, not a, not in a, a in an inappropriate manner. Um, and I also love the, the, the tips and the suggestions where if you are impacted, where you can utilize the, the time as really an opportunity, whether it's to get get better organized, whether it's creating more content, uh, going back, re-reviewing some of the things that you're doing. So some really wonderful suggestions and tips, some actionable items, I think, for, for everybody. Um, so I, I just want to thank you both, Dan and, and Robert, for joining us. Uh, thank you, everyone uh, that's dialed in and uh, for all the great questions, uh, those that we were able to, to, to get through. Um, this does conclude our presentation for today. When you log out, you will receive a survey, and I greatly appreciate you taking the time to give us your feedback about your experience. Um, as I mentioned previously, the slides presented as well as a recording of the webinar will be sent to you via email later today. And uh, I hope you can join us next month on the 27th as we discuss emerging social platforms and how uh, um, just this accelerated growth of usership uh, and and why brands should look to start considering some of those uh, interesting platforms that maybe you've been exposed to um, as you've been working from home, like the the TikToks and Reddit and and maybe even digging into Pinterest a bit more. But with that, uh, I appreciate you all. Stay healthy. Stay safe. I'm Ryan Manchi. This has been the webinar series brought to you by the Central Institute, and we're glad that you joined us. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.